checked out Kung Fu Panda 4 the other day. It's not good. Listen, this is a family kids movie. I don't want to be a skadoosh, but I have to be honest here. I didn't have high expectations going into Kung Fu Panda 4, but I thought maybe it could win me over, but it actually turned me off more. So here we are with a review of Kung Fu Panda 4. Let's begin. Before really sinking my teeth into this review, I would appreciate it if you kachowed the subscribe button and then I could say, Bazinga! You hit it! A lot of really weird, funny catchphrases from different characters over the years. It's amazing. And there's a brand new catchphrase added to Kung Fu Panda 4! And it's said by the main character of this film, Zen, played by Aquafina. My favorite! Before I throw a hissy fit about this actress, I have to first say, if you're a parent wondering if this movie's fine for your kids, yes, it's absolutely disposable fine trash. They can go, they can watch it for an hour and a half, get in and out. I shouldn't say it's trash, that's unfair. It's just so lame for a Kung Fu Panda movie. I thought they really hit the mark with the second one. It was a little bit more adult, it had drama, it had stuff for the children. It really hit the right stride. And number one is great too, it's got a lot of kung fu action, it's really fun. But I thought the third movie really dumbed things down again and it felt way more childish than the previous two entries. There just really wasn't anything unique going on with it. And here we are with the fourth, easily the worst of this franchise. So parents, yes, this movie's fine for your kids. It's not scary, there's no swearing or anything. Uh, Poe isn't gonna like eat the flesh off of a person. Although that'd be pretty cool for a panda to do in a DreamWorks film. No, it's, it's, it's fine. You could go, it's harmless. Maybe take a nap, like I almost did during this. Let's talk about Aquafina. Um, here's the thing, everybody's got that actor, right? Everybody has that person that's in movies and you just kind of roll your eyes or you scratch your head thinking, why? Why does this person continue to get so much work? And why are they always in the movies that I tend to be interested in? Here we are again with Aquafina voicing Zen, who is basically the protagonist with Poe. These two are gonna spend the majority of the film together and she just is so grating on my ears. This person named after a bottle of water doesn't put any effort into her performances. They're the same every single time, whether she's a bird in The Little Mermaid, or a bird in Migration, or a dragon in Raya and the Last Dragon. She's it's just, it's always the same. Oh, let's go over here, pal. Whoa, what are you doing? That just happened. No, but I'm dead to you, baby, I'm Aquafina. I hate it. But why is she in this so much, you might be asking yourself. Well, it's because the story in this one revolves around Poe trying to find a new dragon warrior to take his place so he can become a spiritual leader. If this seems like a premature plot point to have, it's because it is. It's because he's already hit Super Saiyan God mode because of Kung Fu Panda 3. He's got that staff, he can do all sorts of magical yellow crap, throw fireballs and stuff, which he barely does in this movie. In fact, he's downgraded quite a bit. Sure, he can, he can fight foes, he's still stumbling around, being a clumsy oaf, yet using it to his, I guess, advantage. But he doesn't come off as a character that's a force to be reckoned with. And his buddy road trip with Zen just is not interesting. And it's probably because the foe they're going up with, the chameleon, has little screen time and doesn't have any sort of imposing threat. The whole gimmick of this film is that chameleon can shapeshift and she's going to use this ability to take hold of some of the past villains that Poe's faced off against. He squared off against these in both the movies and I would imagine the TV animated series. I haven't seen that, so I can't say for sure, but I would imagine there's cameos from those as well. And a fan favorite was set to return, Tai Long. He's coming back, he's gonna kick butt, and uh, let's pump the brakes. Let's pump the brakes on some of these foes. This is a very back-heavy film. We're not seeing a lot of these characters, and definitely not in the way you want to. So we have a really lame A plot, and then there's also this B storyline that is so bizarre. I don't know who thought this was a fun idea, but we follow Poe's two dads, his adopted goose parent, and the original panda biological father that he found in the third movie. They're gonna road trip together as well. They're on Poe's tail, pun intended, finding the places that he went to, questioning people and moving on, hijinks ensue. It's not very funny. 
I just found this to be a head scratcher because in this movie they're concerned about Poe going up against the chameleon. He's met his match, but we haven't really seen the chameleon yet, and they haven't for sure. So I don't know why she's she's the big bad that everybody's worried about when she hasn't proved herself, and I'm not even sure they know who she is. They've just heard some things. The most egregious part of all of this is the Furious Five MIA. There are no Furious Five in this movie. They're off doing their own thing, Poe tells us right when this movie fires up. Tigress, gone. Mantis, nowhere to be found. Probably because they didn't want to pay the voice actors to return. I, I imagine that's a costly thing to get Angelina Jolie, Seth Rogen, Jackie Chan. You know, these people aren't cheap. But this movie kind of feels like it is. A very tame storyline. No real dramatic elements. No real amazing reveals. It's just so formulaic. Even visually, it's doing nothing exciting. In the past Kung Fu Panda movies, there's been some amazing wide sweeping shots, some great scale, some beautiful renders. This is just so kind of by the books. Again, I realize this is a family flick geared towards little ones. Do we need a review for that? I mean, that that that's fine. Take them if you want, waste some money in an afternoon. Just for me as an adult going, there was some something special about the Kung Fu Panda series that did speak to adults. Kind of like How to Train Your Dragon. Those were both really great movie franchises. And hopefully they don't do this with How to Train Your Dragon. Bring a fourth one out that feels like it's just there to make money. And not have even a tiny ounce of passion put into it. From an action standpoint, a lot of it's chase scenes. There's Kung Fu towards the end. But for the most part, it's not Kung Fu. Panda. It's more like running away, falling over stuff, Panda. That's what you can expect from this one. Laughs, hit and miss. It's got, God, it's just got so much generic crap in it. You know the cute star in Mario that's like, we're all gonna die, and it's funny. It's funny hearing that dark doom and gloom coming out of such a cutesy character. And that's been done a bunch of different times before that. And here we are again with these three little bunnies that are like, ah, we're gonna feast on your remains. It's just... Okay, I, I, I get it. That This is what we're doing. Bottom line, it's watchable, but I'd rather watch something else. That's, I guess, the takeaway for this one. I definitely would not waste money seeing this in theaters unless you are desperate to get the kids out for the afternoon. I can't imagine an eight-year-old or under is going to be disappointed or underwhelmed, but my kids are getting a little older now. They have no interest. So I went to this by myself. So sad. But I do it for you. I do it for the review. And now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments if you saw this film, what you thought. Are you excited? Are you maybe not so excited anymore after this glowing recommendation to not see it? Let me know. Please like the video. Again, subscribe. I would love if you uh, skadooshed your ass to that subscribe button. Throw me one. It's free. I found out. Sheila, free? Yep. Sheila says it's free to do so. But what's not free is possibly saying super thanks. You can click a button under this video. Say, hey, Adam, keep up the good work. Here's a couple bucks. Super thank you. Or become a member on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a couple different tiers. There's exclusive vlogs every couple weeks. You get a few new ones, fresh as a daisy, depending on your tier support level. I would appreciate it. All right. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Take care.